woke up with a start when I felt a cold sensation all over my body, with a rustling sound. I realized that everything from my hair to my upper body was soaking wet. Above me stood my mother-in-law. What in the world did you do? What am I doing? Why are you still sleeping? It's still dark outside. Shut up. Don't be a lazy wife and sleep around. You should be doing all the housework too. I understand. With that, my mother-in-law left the room. My body was rattling and shaking from being dust with water in the middle of winter. I can't believe it. How could she go to such lengths just because she didn't like me? I absolutely cannot forgive her. If it comes to this, I'll do it back to you too. After confirming that my mother-in-law had gone to bed, I immediately began to take action. My name is Patricia. I am 28 years old. I just got married a week ago, and I am a newlywed. I married my husband Matthew after two years of dating. We work at different companies, but our jobs are the same, so we get home at the same time. We share the household chores. This dinner is delicious. My husband praised me with a smile after taking a bite of my dinner. Seeing him like that, I couldn't help but smile as well. Really? I'm glad. I've been working hard since this morning to prepare it. I wanted you to enjoy it. You're a really good cook. Everything is so good. I'm glad to hear you say that. And it makes it all worthwhile when people are happy. I am so lucky to be married to such a wonderful wife. Stop it! You make me blush. I know that these compliments are a bit exaggerated. Even so, I was honestly happy to hear my husband say that. Then one day, my husband went to work on his day off. While I was at home relaxing by myself, the intercom rang. Who is it? I opened the front door, and there is my mother-in-law. Stella. I said, and my mother-in-law came in. You opened the door so slow. How long are you going to make your mother-in-law wait? I'm sorry, but why today? I just happened to call Matthew this morning, and he told me he was working on his day off. So I'm here to educate you. Educate me? I didn't understand what my mother-in-law meant, but I had a bad feeling about it. What kind of an education is she talking about? Besides, the atmosphere was totally different from the last time I saw her. I've met her several times so far, including to greeting her on my wedding day. I have only had a cheerful and kind impression of my mother-in-law. It is absolutely ridiculous for her to come all the way here when Matthew is not here. However, I couldn't just push her away. I had no choice but to let her into the living room. And offer her a cup of coffee. My mother-in-law took a sip and frowned. What is this? How could you serve such bad coffee? I'm sorry, but this is my parents' favorite coffee. I don't care about that. It's not normal that you can't even serve your mother-in-law a decent cup of coffee. I'm sorry. I'll make you another cup in a minute. It's fine. No matter how many times you make it, it'll probably taste bad anyway. I'm sorry. I didn't know what to say to my mother-in-law, who was clearly in a bad mood. Why did she suddenly come to visit me? Why is she being so harsh with me? When I went to my parents-in-law's house when I first started dating my husband, my mother-in-law did not behave like this. She smiled and said she was happy that she was getting a daughter. However. The mother-in-law I see in front of me now bears no resemblance to her. I half panicked and didn't know how to react. As I stood there, my mother-in-law glared at me. Why are you standing there for? What about cleaning? Did you do the laundry? Is it done? Laundry is done. You haven't done the cleaning yet. Matthew is working hard. So should you. Do it quickly. I'll watch you. I can't clean the house when you're here, Stella. I can take care of the house later. Don't you hear me? I am here to educate you. So get on with it. it yes, ma'am. 
I immediately took out a vacuum cleaner and started sweeping the floor. My mother-in-law was in no mood to argue with me. She also complained about every single thing I did, so I was in no mood to clean the floor. You are not cleaning properly. That's why you can't take care of the house. The way you hang the laundry is not good. You need to redo it. Don't rely on the dishwasher to wash the dishes. Wash them yourself. She would say things like this and make me re-dry clothes or re-wash the dishes. What could be more wasteful than this? It felt like an incredibly long day, even though it was my day off. That night, I decided to tell my husband about my mother-in-law. Today, your mother. As I was about to say this, my husband opened his mouth happily. My mom told me about it. She told me that you two had tea together today. What? Tea? She said she had a lot of fun at our house, and you had a lot of small talk. Thanks for being so friendly with mom. No, that's not. Your mother was upset with me a lot for the way I did the housework. She did. My husband looks at me with a confused face. When I explained everything that had happened today, he looked incredulous. He immediately called his mother. Hello, mom. What's going on? What are you talking about? Why did you say that to Patricia? Anyway, don't come here when I'm not around anymore. Bye. My husband seemed a little angry and hung up the phone. Apparently, he believed what I had said. I was happy that my husband was on my side, but I was also worried. I wondered how my mother-in-law would react to his warning. If she really feels sorry for herself and felt bad about it, then something similar would never happen again. However, if she was upset by this, there might be a worse kind of wife baiting awaiting me. I hoped it was the former, but unfortunately, the result was the latter. My mother-in-law never visited our house, but she sent me harassing messages on a daily basis. Of course, I thought about talking to my husband about it. But the message said, "If you tell on Matthew, I'll make him divorce you." I was so scared that I could not confide in my husband. I was at least relieved that she did not visit our house. This time, my mother-in-law called me to her home. Pretending to be reconciled, I told Matthew that I wanted to go see my mother-in-law. She's probably trying to get me to come to her house as a last resort, since she is banned from our house. I received frequent messages from my mother-in-law, and Matthew also seemed to receive invitations from his mother. Each time he would tell me, "It's my mom again. She's persistent. I told her we're not going." Matthew, I don't mind. I don't mind going. But my mom, I was surprised at the first. But I want to have a good relationship with my mother-in-law. She's inviting me, so I should go. If that's what you want, then I'm fine with it. Matthew is on my side, but he still wants his mother and wife to get along with each other. Thinking it was for Matthew's sake, I agreed. Thus, we went to my parents-in-law's house. It was about five months after my mother-in-law's unannounced visit. When we arrived at my parents-in-law's house, my mother-in-law greeted my husband with a big smile on her face. Matthew, welcome home. We've been expecting you. I'm telling you, Mom. Don't say anything strange to Patricia. I won't say anything. I feel bad about what happened. I just want Patricia to be a good wife. That's all I wanted. Anyway, you'd better moderate your behavior. I only came home today because Patricia said yes. I know, I know. Thank you for coming too, Patricia. She was smiling with a fresh smile that I could not imagine from the mother-in-law I had met before. It was as if she was my mother-in-law when I first met her. I had been fooled by her smile at first. I thought to myself bitterly. While I was at my mother-in-law's house, I tried not to spoil her good mood, so I don't offend her. Unlucky for us, snow is in the forecast for the evening and night tonight. Considering we'll be driving home. I'll probably be home early. Just a few more hours of patience. 
I told myself that over and over again as I spent my time at my parents-in-law's house. Sure enough, all of my mother-in-law's attention was on my husband. I didn't have anything to say to her. Instead, my mother-in-law was talking to Matthew happily. We were supposed to have an early dinner and go home. However, my mother-in-law's conversation drags on and dinner started late. As we were finishing dinner, my mother-in-law said, I'm sorry, Matthew, that the cake I served you for dessert had alcohol in it. Alcohol? Yes, you didn't notice? It's very strong. No way. I use it all the time because it smells so good. So I put it in the food today out of habit. Then I guess I shouldn't drive. Yes. Besides, you know, it's already starting to snow. I looked outside, and it is indeed starting to snow. It doesn't matter if there was alcohol in the cake or not. The tires were not studless, so it would have been dangerous to go home once it started snowing anyway. Seriously. My husband was shocked and slumped his shoulders. I'm sorry, Patricia. He tells me apologetically. I shook my head. My husband had done nothing wrong. We ended up staying at my in-law's house. My husband stayed in his old room, and I stayed in the guest room. To tell the truth, I would feel safer in the same room with my husband, but my mother-in-law insisted repeatedly, so we slept in different rooms. My husband seemed to agree with my mother-in-law about this, and apologetically said to me, My room is too small. Besides, the bed is a single. I don't mind it at all. No, it's my fault that we're still here. And the bed for guests is cleaner and bigger. I just want you to have a good night's sleep. Okay, if you insist, Matthew. I'm sorry about today. We'll leave first thing in the morning. Okay, thanks. I took a shower and went to bed to prepare for tomorrow. In the morning, I would be able to go home immediately. I was already relieved. A few hours later, I woke up with a start when I felt a cold sensation all over my body. I realized that my hair and upper body were soaking wet. Above me stood my mother-in-law. What in the world did you do? What am I doing? Why are you still sleeping? It's still dark outside. Shut up. Don't be a lazy wife and sleep around. You should be doing all the housework too. Understood. Why are you doing this, Stella? Isn't it obvious? It's because I don't like you. What do you think I let you sleep alone for? You will only make Matthew angry if you do this. You're so annoying. If you keep talking back to me, I'm going to make him divorce you. That's between husband and wife. Anyway, get up and do the housework. And put away the beddings in this room. Don't let Matthew find out about this. You understood? With these words, my mother-in-law left the room. She probably thinks I will do whatever she says, as I have always done. My body was rattling and shaken from being dosed with water in the middle of winter. Immeasurable anger welled up, and veins rose to the surface of my forehead. No longer did I feel fear for my mother-in-law. Only disgust. I can't believe it. I can't believe she would do such length just because she doesn't like me. I absolutely can't forgive her. I'm gonna do something about it. Rubbing my shaking body, I wrapped myself in a blanket for the time being. When I saw that my mother-in-law had fallen asleep, I got up and left the room. I headed for my husband's room. Matthew, I'm sorry. Wake up. I shook him, and he woke up with a start. He was surprised to see me soaking wet. Patricia? What happened to you? You're all wet. I'm sorry to startle you. Your mother did this to me. What? My mom? How could she do this? To tell you the truth. I suppressed the tremor in my body and confided in him what had happened so far. I told him that I had pretended to make up with my mother-in-law as she had asked me to. 
She made me sleep alone in the guest room because she wanted to harass me. I told him that my mother-in-law was still pecking on me and was planning to get us to divorce. I cried towards the end, but I tried to keep myself together. Then, my husband silently got up and pulled me by the hand and headed for the bathroom. He got a warm shower started and said, Warm yourself up, and smiled gently. The shower warmed me to the core. As I took a breath and thought about the future, I heard my mother-in-law scream from upstairs. I hurried out of the bathroom, put on my underwear and clothes, and hurried upstairs. My father-in-law had just arrived and was standing in front of my mother-in-law. What was that scream? In my mother-in-law's room was my husband holding a bucket in his hand. My mother-in-law was lying on the bed, soaking wet and shaking. She looked at my husband in disbelief and protested. Matthew, what did you do? And my husband responded coldly. I just did what you did to Patricia. What are you talking about? Don't say strange things. I didn't do that. Then why was Patricia so wet? Well, that's... She deliberately got herself wet to make it my fault. Cut the crap. Patricia would never do something dirty like that. The place fell silent at the sound of my husband's yelling, which I had never heard before. My parents-in-law had probably never seen my husband this angry before. What's going on? When my father-in-law asked this, my husband quietly opened his mouth. Mama has been picking on Patricia. She made her sleep alone in the guest room today, so that she could harass her. Oh, come on. That's not true, is it? It's true. Patricia was shaking when mom poured water on her. She finally told me everything she had been holding back. So I decided to do the same thing to her. Matthew, I will never forgive mom. I will never forgive her. I don't need a mother who does such terrible things. My husband sat and pulled my hand, saying that he would call a cab and we would go home. At that moment, my mother-in-law called out my name. Her face scrunched up. Patricia, wait. What? Oh, I'm sorry for everything I've done. I apologize. I'm sorry. Matthew is my beloved son. Perhaps my mother-in-law is the type of person who cannot let go of her children. She cared too much about her beloved son. And she saw me, her daughter-in-law, as an enemy. That's why I continued to harass me. But that was none of my business. Whatever the reason, her actions were unforgivable. I glared at my mother-in-law and declared clearly, I don't care about your reasons. You hurt me a lot. Don't think I can forgive you so easily. I will never forgive you. Don't say that. I am truly sorry. Sorry? I don't need that kind of verbal remorse. I tried to compromise with you at one time, but you were the one who betrayed me and ruined it, right? I have no intention of seeing you again. Goodbye. Wait, Patricia. Matthew, wait. Ignoring my mother-in-law's voice, my husband and I called a cab and went straight home. After that, my mother-in-law contacted me several times to apologize, but I ignored all of her calls. My husband said that he had already blocked his mother's contact information. According to my father-in-law, my mother-in-law was quite shocked that Matthew had broken off the relationship. He said that she never leaves her room now. She has been mumbling his name and regretting her past actions. My father-in-law also said that he would consider the future when the time was right. Either way, we were thinking of moving out too, so I won't be seeing my mother-in-law anymore. I could never have solved this case alone. My husband was on my side, and thanks to him, I am back to my happy life. Matthew, thank you so much. You believed in me. What are you talking about? It's natural to trust your wife, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you too. I chose the right person to marry. I want to continue to enjoy life with my loving husband.